as many of you know, Sri Lanka has gone through 30 years of war and it's been a bloody, brutal war. It's a beautiful country for those of you who travel now as tourists, but for most of us who are citizens who love the country a great deal, there are still, still a lot of systemic uh, underpinnings, structural violence that hasn't even after the end of war in 2009 been addressed. I have lived my entire life in a country that I love very deeply, but that has been racked by war. What do you do when this country kills the narratives that hold the people responsible for that violence uh, accountable? And when I, at around the time my son was born, uh, about four years ago, Narin, that you see up here, I began to wonder how technology could help capture those stories and publish it out into the world. Narin's life, 20 years down the line, even in Sri Lanka, is going to be fundamentally different, and I hope so, uh, very different to the life that I grew up with in a country of conflict. Two things will change. One is that he will not anymore be able to distinguish between PCs and the mobile phone. And mobile phone and mobile telephony is going to be ubiquitous. We are, for the first time in humanity, going to have a global population where each of us is going to be addressable. But how does that help me hold people responsible for violence accountable. These are what I call the telegenic revolutions that we are living through today, the Tunisias and the Egypts of the world. We know about these stories. We hear about these stories. This is what I do. It's far more hidden. It's far more marginalized. It's, in a sense, a bit more risky, but it's also that much more fulfilling. Each of these stories and thousands more over around six to seven years are those that have been written by citizens and captured and produced and published on a platform that I created for Sri Lanka that's the first of its kind and the best known of its kind in the country. From our African ancestry to stories about IDPs in refugee camps in unimaginable conditions even after the war, each of these stories has been one that not a single mainstream media outlet has touched and citizens themselves have reported on using whatever devices they could. I call this bearing witness and bearing witness to me is an active process to use whatever you have to report however best you can. And I believe that the stories like Tunisia and Egypt are rare. For me, it is far more important to capture ordinary stories of courage. And these stories, I believe, through the mobile phone, which is going to be, as I said, ubiquitous, are going to change the way Sri Lankans, but writ large, all of us, think of peace building and how to hold those responsible for the wars that wreck our world more accountable for their actions. But with this comes a great responsibility. Data loss, just uh, recently, Gmail lost 150,000 email accounts, all the data was erased. For me, data loss also means lives lost. These are people's histories, these are their memories, these are who they are. And this is the only digital repository of the peace process that went on in Sri Lanka and was created by me. Together, there are around six million plus words of content I've created. That's the single most valuable repository of narratives during war that haven't been captured anywhere else. This is what I do. I think it was Martin Luther King who said that if a man hasn't found out what he is willing to die for, he's not fit to live. I think I've seen enough death, and I submit to you the reversal of it. I am interested in what people want to live for, and these are the stories that I want to champion. This is my work and this is my life. Thank you very much.